Hello, welcome to my tech fan. I'm Igor and I have a laser engraver for this video. And this is Enjoywood Cell E10. And this box is sent to me by Banggood in exchange for a review. This is 10 watt dial laser with fixed focus. And according to specifications, it is able to engrave up to 11,000 millimeters per minute speed. This is quite acceptable if we can get this speed without those additional vibrations, which will be tested in this video. The working area is 410 by 400 millimeters, which is also average for these types of the desktop laser engravers. And it can support offline engraving over TF card with the Atomstax mobile app. Now this sentence and the design make me think that this is some kind of Atomstack rebrand, but I will take a closer look where it's, it's assembled and make a close conclusions. Before I open the box, a few words about the safety. Don't forget, laser engravers are tools and not toys, so you should always pay attention to safety. Most important are safety glasses, which uh, not only you, but everybody who is in that room should wear, because the laser may bounce from the walls and uh, they also may damage the eye. This is a short unboxing time lapse. I just wanted to show you the packaging. And this is content of the box, parts of the frame, this is the X gentry, and th there is the main unit box and I can see an external antenna for a Wi-Fi connection. This is the power adapter with output of uh, 12 volts, uh, 5 amperes. Some sample materials, uh, plywood and uh, black acrylic for uh, test uh, engraving or cutting. USB cable, timing belts and uh, screws for assembling, small SD card with a USB adapter. And this is that laser module which really reminds me of Atomstax uh, M50. It says it's M50 but doesn't say it is uh, Atomstax. The input of the laser is 12 watts, 3 amperes and uh, maximum power between 10 and 11 watts. And they claim that this glass will protect us from these uh, laser beams and we don't need the safety glasses and actually they don't even send the safety glasses in the kit. But I disagree with this. It is true for the engraving because it is very low and we cannot see directly the laser, it's fine. But when we do some cutting, I usually do some cutting placing something below this uh, plywood and uh, then they, actually the beam is visible and bounce from this uh, steel plate and in that case definitely I would recommend you to use some protection glasses. This is some transparent acrylic properly uh, to use as a distancer and uh, very nice detail user manual. And we have this uh, steel plate cutting mat <laughs> giveaway to, to use it uh, during the cutting or the engraving to protect our desk from the laser. For assembling I will just use this uh, installation manual. I can see that it is very simple so I will just create a time-lapse video about it. I just took my time and if you follow the analog clock on the desk you can see that I could assemble it in approximately 30 minutes. It's assembled in approximately half hours and uh, my first impressions. As standard, I mean good old design, it can be put together uh, very fast. Uh, I really don't like too much this uh, cable management. It will work, but some kind of drag chains or other solution would be nicer. What is very positive that uh, this X Gentry is not 20 by 20, but 20 by 40 millimeters. Distance between wheels is bigger and this gives more stability to this module during the Y moving and uh, probably it will have less vibrations uh, which are important especially if you want to engrave on those higher speeds. This is that main box, emergency stop button, uh, power and USB plugs, on off switch, reset button, slot for TF card and I can see some kind of HDMI slot for, probably for the screen. Now if uh, I'm very, very curious if it is compatible with Atomstax screens, in that case you can buy it separately to have completely offline graving. I have one, I will test it that, uh, later. About design of the moving mechanism, well, not my favorite because I uh, like better when the stepper motors are not on the moving part. For, so this stepper motor could be, let's say, maybe on this side. Y-axis stepper motor could be on, uh, fixed uh, here. Of course, we need uh, double length timing belts, but in that case, uh, less mass on the moving parts. And also with this structure, the center of the mass of the model may be very low. For example, if I engrave something very small, as you can see, center of the mass is low, far below this cell extrusion. It, it uh, helps that it is wider, but it would be much better if it would be here. So uh, what I always recommend to put something 
some kind of box and lift the object you want to engrave. In that case you will get a much nicer engraving so without those uh, vibrations. Setting the focus is very comfortable because I don't need any additional tools. I will use this distancer. And now the focus is set to the top of this surface. So I installed and started the laser GBS software uh, which I will use. It's a free software but it's available only for Windows. Uh, Mac and Linux users can use a Lightburn for example, but it is not completely free software. I will turn on the engraver. And unfortunately I can hear that the fan immediately starts with the working. Uh, because I know that there are versions uh, which enable the fan only when the module is in usage. It will be nice to hear to have that option too. Here I have to set the COM port and bow and if necessary install the CH340 driver. Mine is already installed and I go to connect. If necessary I have to unlock it. But it's already unlocked and I can test the moving. I'm loading the JPEG file and I'm using the vectorize and here you can see my settings but I will always show you this on the screen the current settings I'm using for the engraving or on the cutting. And I will repeat this engraving two times. In first attempt uh, the module will be in lowest position and in second attempt I will lift it higher so I will place something below this uh, testing object and I'm expecting better quality in the second attempt. Well, actually, this is quite good quality too. Uh, I will repeat this with 3000 mm per minute. So these two are engraved with the same settings in the lowest and in the highest position of the module. I was expecting a little bit more vibrations here, but they have very similar quality. So basically this 40 mm all extrusion works great uh, independent of the position of the module. And I want to engrave some grayscale image. I'm switching to line to line tracing, 10 lines per millimeter. And I want to engrave this on 11,000 mm per minute, the highest recommended engraving speed. And this is a time lapse of approximately four and a half minutes. Hmm. Well, this is definitely very strong laser because with these settings, uh, usually I am getting a quite good quality of the image. But here, or I have to raise the speed. But theoretically, this is the maximum. If it is not limited in the firmware, I will try to raise the speed. But also, maybe I have to reduce the power of the module. So this was engraved on 20,000 mm per minute and it works, so this was much faster. So definitely much better. Uh, these lines are in the plywood and even my camera it recognized that this is a human face. So it is good that the firmware uh, doesn't limit the maximum engraving speed. So this was engraved on 20,000 mm per minute full power and this on theoretically maximum 11,000 mm per minute full power. Now I want to do some cutting. I always like to lift the object so I can see the laser beam from the other side. But in this case, uh, pay attention that there are safety glasses because the laser may bounce from this uh, steel plate. And important in settings, I'm changing from the dynamic to the constant power, from M4 to M3. And I will try different speeds. For warm up, this is 2 mm thick plywood. Two millimeter plywood, even on 500 millimeters per minute, is not a problem for this module. This is five millimeter thick uh, plywood, the thickest I have at home, and uh, I know that at 100 millimeters per minute, uh, without air assist, uh, it could catch frame, but probably it would be cut in one pass. I will set the speed to 200 millimeters per minute, and I think it will be cut in two passes. Hmm, it was very close to be cut in, in one pass. Let's try on 150 mm per minute. So 150 mm per minute cutting in one pass. Nice.
and I know if I would have an error assist installed, I could cut 100 mm per minute even thicker plywood. And now simming with an MDF wood, which is very hard for cutting, and uh, only with two laser engravers I could cut this in two passes. Let's see how many passes I need uh, with this uh, 10 watt laser module. 100 mm per minute full power. And I could constantly see the beam load from the other side. Yes. So this is definitely a very strong module. This is a third laser engraver which can cut this MDF in only two passes. But as you can see with art air assist, the edges are very burned on this 100 mm per minute speed. Just to show you, this is how it looks like if you have the air assist in cutting in two passes. And now I will try to engrave and cut on this carbon paper to create some kind of business card, for example. I already did some experimenting, so I prepared two pictures with same dimensions. First one will be for the engraving and then without moving the module, the cutting. And now without moving the module, I'm loading the second image for the cutting. Not perfect, but I hope I can give you some idea for some new projects. And now cutting this 3mm thick black acrylic. And I know from my experience that with 5W laser modules I need 2 passes with 100mm per minute. With 10 watts, this should be cut in one pass. Very nice sharp cutting, both the hole and the cutting out part. This will be a medal for my daughter. And as you can see, cut in only one pass with 100mm per minute full power. And now I'm engraving stainless steel, so this is the plate I'm using with these uh, testings. And I will engrave here the initials, the first letter of this uh, engraver. 100mm per minute full power. And this is the result, but first let's clean it with isopropyl alcohol. So very nice and strong engraving and I can feel with my finger that it is melted into steel. Uh, similar results uh, visually like with other 10 watt laser modules. These in lighter color are with the 5 watts. But uh, if I touch it with my finger, I think this is the strongest one. Maybe I can illustrate it with the sound. Anyway, like with the other thermal laser modules, this can also engrave stainless steel. And if you want even darker surface, you can use some black marker and you will get something like this. And I'm preparing a bench for the engraving. Here you can see my settings for the engraving, but uh, then I go to the quick save and saving the NC file to the SD card. Now let's see if we can have the real offline engraving from the TF card. And this is my screen for Etostack laser engraver and I want to see if it is compatible with the Injo wood. I'm removing the USB cable. Okay, the problem is that it's on Chinese. There is benchy.nc frame. Okay. One pass. And there it is, the real offline engraving. So uh, this you can buy separately, but I don't know, I would suggest Enjoyable to sell this uh, with the screen too. Another conclusions. Well, very decent uh, laser engraver, but with extremely strong laser module. This is one of the strongest 10 watt laser modules uh, tested so far. It's a pity that the fan is always on. It would be good if it would turn off when the module is not operating. 
Not my favorite uh, moving mechanism. I don't really like when the stepper motors are on the moving part. For example, X is on this uh, module holder, Y is on this uh, X gentry. So it would be good if they would be static. But it do the job, so it's very good that this is wider and uh, very stable, even in the lowest position of this module. Now, uh, you have to pay attention with these uh, laser engravers, which only have one uh, Y-axis step motor and operates on 12 volts. The V-stop wheel extension must be set uh, perfectly, and also the current of the steppers, but that's only on the mainboard. Uh, Otherwise, uh, the stepper motor may struggle uh, with the moving of the x-axis. So if you have these kind of problems, these two things you can check the tension of the V-slot wheels, that's simpler, or the current on the stepper motor drivers. It's a pity that it doesn't arrive with the screen, but it is good that it is compatible with the Atomstack equipment, so you can buy this screen and have a completely offline engraving, like I presented in this video. And uh, actually I did a poll on my YouTube channel and most of the users will, would like to have this kind of possibility for completely offline engraving. One very important thing I would suggest to the enjoy wood, put some safety glasses in the kit. Because yes, this protection glass uh, holds uh, most of the uh, beams, laser beams. During the engraving it is very low, but if I do some cutting I always like to lift it. And in that case the laser beams may bounce from the stainless steel and definitely then uh, everybody in the room should wear these safety glasses. And one small tip, uh, this distancer is in transparent color, so it would be good if it is, I don't know, in yellow or red or something like that, because I was always searching on the desk, where is it? And uh, uh, another tip for the cutting, uh, we would like to place the focus of the module not on the top of the surface, but a little bit deeper. For example, if you want to cut 6mm plywood, I want to place the focus not on the surface, but 6mm deep. In that case, uh, I could use a different distancer, but I don't have uh, space because this is 3mm in thickness. So I would suggest to the manufacturer to set the focus, let's say 5mm at least, or 6mm lower than the lowest uh, point of this uh, housing of the module. In that case, we have enough space. We can see the print, for example, different distancers. If case I want to engrave in, uh, then I will place the focus on the top of the surface. If I want to do some cutting, in that case I would use different distancers uh, to place the focus a little bit deeper and much easier I can cut, I know, uh, 6, 7, 8 millimeter plywood too. With these strong laser modules, 10 watt or even stronger, it is highly recommend to use uh, air assist. Now again good news that uh, this is compatible with the Atomstax air assist kit where we will get not only the compressor, but also the air assist nozzle, which can be mounted on this module. In that case, cutting of the wood will be much cleaner and safer, because on those lower speeds, uh, some flames may appear, and air assist definitely prevents this. Well, that was my experience. If you have some additional suggestions, you know, write me a line in the comment sections. Thank you for watching, and happy and safe engraving.